Hey, good morning. I'm not a licensed electrician, but I do have an electrical background. I need to add six new circuits to my home, and I only have six breaker spots left in my service entrance panel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a sub panel next to this panel. I'm going to put a 100 amp breaker in the main panel, and I'm going to feed the sub panel. I'm going to do it properly. I'm going to get a building permit, owner builder affidavit, and I'll have it inspected, and then I'll go from there adding my branch circuits. When I went to the building department and dropped off my owner builder affidavit and told them I was doing electrical work with a sub panel, they gave me this diagram and asked me to please fill it out. It's got the meter box, service panel, they got amps, wire size, general information. So I filled it out. The existing panel, I told them, is 200, 200 amp service entrance panel. I want to add a 100 amp breaker to feed a sub panel. Here's the sub panel. I gave them the wire colors, the black, red, white, green. 3334. I have three current carrying conductors for hot, hot, neutral, and then four is the ground. And I'm going to use copper. 125 amp sub panel, 32 spaces. They said okay. Well, then they came back to me and they said, well, we need a load calculation sheet of your existing home. We need a load calculation sheet for your home plus the new load you want to add. Plus, we need panel schedules for the existing service panel and the new panel you want to add. So, for residential load calculation, if you use NEC 2017 and you go to 220.82B, that allows you to use the nameplate ratings on the appliances in your home. You don't have to use standardized VA. You get to use whatever your consumption is on your appliances. There are a few standards. So you take the square footage of your house, and then you have to times it times 3 VA. 3 VA is basically the same as watts, and, and, and that you have to do for any residence. You have to have a minimum of two small appliance circuits at 1500 VA each, one laundry circuit, which would be for your washing machine, minimum, and then for my appliances, I got the nameplate ratings for my electric range. It had a sticker that said 10.2 kilowatts, 10,200 watts. My water heater is rated 4,500 watts. And you just go down and add in everything you've got. That's the refrigerator, that was rated in amps, that was 5.3, so that came out to be 636 watts. Uh, my bathroom jacuzzi tub, it's got a one horsepower motor, one horsepower, 746 watts, uh, so I put the 750 in there. So once you add up everything in your house, you get a total calculated load without the air conditioner or heat. That's a separate entity. So once you have your general load calculated, 220.82 says of the total calculated load 10,000 watts will be rated at 100 percent so we got the 10,000 watts right here and that leaves me with 33,239 watts well NEC says out of the remaining total calculated load you take 40 percent of that which gives me 13,296 so my total general load of my home as it stands is 23,296 watts. Heating or AC load. You get to pick whichever is bigger. I have electric heat and the AC. They both can't run at the same time. So you pick the one that consumes the most electricity. In my case, my air conditioner consumes 9,800 watts while my heater consumes 11,280. So that's the value I use, 11,280. NEC says of that value you take 65%. So you multiply that by 65% and now you have 7,332 watts. So you take a general load which you calculated up here, you add your air conditioner heating load here, and now I have a calculated service load of 30,628 watts. So now you divide that by 240 volt service and my minimum ampacity for my service entrance panel is 128 amps. My service panel is rated at 200 amps, so 128 is, is well below having to worry about overloading my panel.
So now I had to do load calculation for my existing home plus new service. So everything in the, everything in the top is going to stay the same. And I'm adding the six circuits that I'm going to put in. And I got the wattage or the consumption from the vendor manuals for the equipment I want to install. On this sheet now, my total calculated load before was 44,000 watts. Now it went up to 50,000 259 with the new equipment. Air conditioning stays the same. So now we take the uh, the new general load plus the air conditioner load and we have now a calculated load service of 33,436. So my calculated load went up about 4,000 watts. So again you take the calculated service load divided by the 240 and now my minimum service ampacity here, 139 amps, before it was 128. So my consumption went up 11 amperes. So even at 139 amps, my 200 amp service panel, I won't be overloading it. They asked for a panel schedule. And all that is, is a drawing of your circuit breaker panel. And this is my circuit breaker panel. It's got 40 circuit breakers in it. And I've got, th these are labeled just like they are going up the door when you open the door. If you have a 240 volt circuit, like say for instance the water heater, I just put 30 amp in both blocks because each, each leg is 30 amps. So you just put the breakers as they're listed, you put the amperage of the breakers, and also there, there's A, B, A, B, A, B, that's because there's two 110s coming in and they're opposite each other for phase they alternate going up the panel. And they're labeled, like my panel's upside down, so breaker one is on the bottom, and 40 is on the top, versus one at the top and 40 at the bottom. This is a panel schedule for the new panel I'm gonna add. If you notice, I've got, I've got my six circuits in here. Everything else is blank. And that's all they wanted. After I submitted all the paperwork they requested, they issued me a permit. This load calculation sheet that I have is nothing but an Excel file. And I just did formulas to do all the math. So matter, no matter what numbers you put in here, it automatically populates everything and it does all the math. So no matter what you add or subtract, it, it takes care of it itself. It's, if you're computer savvy, it's very easy to make one. There's no standard format for this sheet. You just have to show your load calculations, that's all. This is a 32 space load center. I'm going to add that right next to the existing load center. And that's what I'll use for the new branch circuits. This panel is mounted with the main breaker on the bottom so it's upside down, bottom fed. The new panel is going to be upside down so I just have to run wire from this panel to this panel. I've got uh, an offset nipple and a schedule 80 elbow in the wall already to get the wires through. And I just have to uh, conduit it over to the new box. So I've got a schedule 80 elbow and I have a metallic offset nipple. What I did was I screwed these two together and I cut my hole in the wall to accommodate this setup. And the reason why I picked this setup is I'm going to put a plastic junction box here to get the wires out of the wall and this offset nipple allows me to chain to pull this pipe in and out of the wall to match the rest of the installation. Inside the wall for the transition I chose two inch pipe. This is a schedule 82 inch and you're probably saying well that's a pretty tight bend radius. Well not really. This is the schedule 80 elbow. I've got three three gauge copper and one four gauge copper. And you can see that that, that wire just slides right through the elbow. So it's, it's not like I'm going to pull all this wire through the elbow. I'll put them through one at a time, but I'm not going to be dragging it. The one thing about these elbows is it's not sharp, but it's got a pretty stiff corner in it. So if you use a, a cone sander or a cone file and hit, hit it, and then sandpaper with your fingers, it works out fine. And I just got a rotor, I just have a cone rotary file in here. And all you gotta do is rub it in through the edges. And 
And once you break that edge off, just get a piece of sandpaper and it doesn't take much. And that, that's very smooth now. There's nothing abrasive in there now. So now this elbow contraption just goes through the hole in the wall, which I had to cut it big to get the whole body of that piece through there. So this goes up into the two inch knockout. Once I get it up in the panel, I'll take the lock ring. The lock ring's kind of curved and the teeth need to face down so they bite into the service entrance panel. Now I'll screw on until it's tight. Now to get it out of the wall, I'm going to transition it with the Schedule 80 nipple. And that'll screw right into there and that's what's going to stick out the wall and allow me to go into a junction box. And this will be how the wires transition out of the wall into the conduit to the new panel. Piece of cake. So with the hole in the box cut, over the nipple, another lock ring curved down. So I got the box level. I'll mark my holes for mounting that junction box on the wall. I opted to put up a plywood backboard because I went to the building department and I asked them can I put my load center on four hollow wall mollies? Do I need to hit a stud with two of the holes and use hollow wall or do I have to put it on an entire piece of plywood? They said that two bolts out of the four of that load center had to be in a stud. Well, I only have two studs here and then they weren't quite right to get the panel mounted. So I opted to put the three quarter inch plywood up there and I got nine quarter inch screws into the studs holding it. So that gives me plenty of placement room to put the load center. Not only that, with the plywood backboard, that gives me plenty of options to staple, branch, circuit, conduit, whatever I got to do to get the uh, passage into the attic. And this is inside the box. Wires will come out of this one and I'll probably put a hole right here to put the wires that way. Bend radius will be no problem. So when I come into this panel, I'm going to go right to the main bus with the neutral here. And I can pick up one of these larger two grounds. You can see they're unused in there. And then I'll go up to the 100 amp breaker. I got the sub panel mounted on the wall. I got four number 14 by 2 inch screws holding this panel to the plywood. Actually one is in a stud, so I got one in a stud and the other three are in the 3 quarter inch plywood. Also when you mount a panel you got to be careful. The highest part of a circuit breaker can't be more than 6 feet 7 inches off the floor. What you need to be aware of if your circuit breakers mount left to right or horizontally, this actuator switch will never change. Whatever you install that. But if you have a panel where the circuit breaker is mounted this way, you got to be careful because the very tip of this lever, actuator lever, can't be more than six feet seven inches. So if you put it in six feet seven inches when it's down and you flick it up and it's higher than six feet seven inches, now you're not per code. When you add a sub panel, you're also going to get a ground bar kit. The grounds have to be separate from the neutrals. Under normal circumstances, there is no current flow in the ground. Even though they're tied together in your main panel, there's no current flow in the ground unless there's a failure somewhere. Then you'll get current to ground. In the sub panel, you have to put all the green or all the bare grounds to a ground block, and this will be tied to the panel through the mounting screws, and then the neutrals will be tied together but they are isolated from the case of the box. That's where you leave this green screw out. There's a green screw so you're not bonding the neutrals to the box. So this, this green screw has to be removed for the sub panel. What happens is if you tie the neutrals and the grounds together in this panel you're going to have current flow through the ground under normal operating conditions. You got the currents always going to go the path of least resistance. So your normal return or your neutral has the current flow. The ground does not. But if I tie the neutral and the ground together, that means I got two wires carrying the current, which is going to split it. If I'm running, if I'm running 10 amps on a circuit, I'm going to get 5 amps through the ground. I'm going to get 5 amps through the neutral, and that is illegal. So you have to put in an isolated ground bar. I've picked a spot. You can put it in with... Uh, if you see there's three holes in it, you can mount this to the enclosure with one screw or two. If you use one, there's nubs that fill the other two holes to try to keep it from tipping. I prefer to mount it with two screws. Alright, so I got the ground bar mounted. 
you can see there's the screw that threads into the back of the panel. There's the other screw that threads into the back of the panel. And this big lug right here will pick up the pick up the uh, four gauge green wire that I have planned for this. If this was not a sub panel, this green screw would be installed. But because this is a sub panel and the grounds and neutrals must be separated, that green screw comes out. That remains removed. So the sub panels on the wall. I have the conduit glued into the fittings. I got the offset nipples in the box. What I'll do is I'll take the box and I'll take this conduit off. I will string all the wires through this while it's laying on the floor. Get the wires through each panel and I'll come back and put all of this together with the wires already in the conduit. That way I'm not pulling any wire through the conduit. It should go together real easy and I won't uh, abrade any of the outer coating and insulation of the wire. I opted for the three gauge copper instead of the two gauge aluminum only because the copper gauge is smaller so it would be a little easier to work with and it, it bends okay. It will be in here with no problem. I got my three three gauge current carrying conductors in the wall. The black, the red, the white. I got the ground. Got the 100 amp in there with the black and the red. And I got it behind all the other wiring. I got the large green one in there. Now I'll assemble all of this on the floor with the conduit. Now I've got the cables fished through all the pipe. I've got the lock rings. I've got the bushing chafe protectors. Let um, me just loosely put it all together, get the wires through, and then tighten everything up. Everything's installed, torqued. I added three supports to this elbow. This piece of conduit was like an inch and a quarter off the wall. Even though this isn't a physical damage area, I'd be concerned that if someone let something slam against this, it could crack it or break it, knock the box off the wall, whatever. So I've put three supports. We cut two by fours against the wall, clamped it. That thing's solid as a rock. It's not going to go anywhere. I ordered the cover. When the cover gets here, I'll call for inspection. I called, scheduled electrical inspection on this new sub panel. Uh, the inspector came out today. They signed off on it. I'm good to go. The new sub panel's ready for branch circuits.